Hi everyone, it's Natasha and I'm back. I've taken like a three, four month break. Not intentionally, but it just kind of like spiraled. The summer has just been crazy and I'm exhausted. And um, yeah, so I, I apologize, but here I am talking about a very important subject that is very near and dear to my heart. I hope you guys are excited about this because this has been a long time coming. Just a little background on me. If you don't know who I am, where I've been um, or where I've been up to for like three to four months. Um, I'm Natasha. I'm a fangirl at heart. I'm a YouTuber. I started in 2013 first reviewing books like young adult books and romance books, sci-fi, fantasy. Um, also kind of putting like my beauty and fashion twist on anything bookish or fandom related. I now work full time for a fashion brand here in Orange County where I live, I live in Southern California. That's what takes up my time. I um, am a talent coordinator now. My original title was marketing assistant, so now I work with all influencers, models, actors. It's so much fun, I love it. And I'm just growing so much as a human. If you don't follow me on Instagram, that's where I post all of my like fashion and Disney bounds, more of my like everyday life over there. It's cool. It's kind of a separate entity now from my YouTube channel, but I also share about body positivity. So in today's video, as the title says, I'm going to be talking about how I learned how to love myself. I'm going to preface this right now. This is going to be extremely emotional. This also might be triggering to some people. So if you're not there yet, I wouldn't continue watching this video, especially if you have an eating disorder or anything like that and you just can't really take all of this. Just be aware of these touchy issues that I'm going to be bringing up in today's video. Like it's all going to be good and around and I'm going to kind of teach you guys some things that I learned, but it's, it's going to be a lot. I've always been like this. I've always been overweight. And I've been on countless diets, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, Atkins diet. I've done it all. Okay. None of that ever made me happy. Like none, none of it ever did. Coming from someone who's plus size who had never ever seen someone like myself in media, it gets really tough. I, I've always been very strong-willed and I've had sound of mind um, growing up, so I, I haven't really taken my insecurities and done um, the unhealthy habits with that. Like th there, I've, I've gone to that point before, but I've always stopped myself. Anyone who has a body on this world has insecurities about themselves in some way or fashion. They don't like everything about themselves and that is extremely normal and perfectly okay. How I became the person who I am today is because of the internet. I remember 13 years old, my mom put me on Jenny Craig. My mom's always been overweight. She's always fluctuated herself. Um, so she always wanted me to have a better life than what she had. I always felt so outcasted, even though I was well loved. I could never wear like limited to, I could never, you know, shop in the little girl section or shop even in the teen section uh, when I was in high school. Like I always wore like went like women's adult clothes. Like all of those things combined doesn't make for a good body image. You look different than all your friends. You can't fit into any of the clothes at the mall. Your family is wanting you to change. That's all the stuff that I had to go through when I was younger. I, n I never felt good about myself. One of the big factors in my insecurities when I was younger was my Girl Scout troop. I love those girls so much, but I always felt so different. Like I couldn't ever do anything. And I don't think it was anyone's fault. It, it, it just, it's just how our world is. And if someone's different and they can't do everything that all the other girls can, it's really hard to make everything fair and the same. I, I, I didn't know how to navigate that. I, I didn't really know what that felt like. Like I was never validated for who I was. I never truly felt like beautiful. When I was putting this video together, I was thinking about who were the people in my life that bullied me? Were they the mean kids at school? Yeah, those people did. Did they really hurt me? Not really. It's the people who are closest to you that hurt you the most. Like I, I definitely got those comments um, at school. Some mean kid would just yell, you're fat to me on the playground. I think I remember times when I had like told my family members, my mom, or my dad that this would happen and they'd be like, well, we just have to change that. And it was always like about change. It was always never about like who I am, the person I am right at this moment. The person I was at that moment was perfectly fine. And no one in my life got that. This time that I'll never ever forget, like I love all these people in my life and I have been teaching them 
ways to kind of rethink about people's bodies. My grandma, I love my grandma, I, I adore her, she's done so much for me, but there was this time right after my dad passed away and my mom was in the hospital because she had like two ulcers in her stomach and she was going through massive surgery and I was 18 and she took me out to dinner and she's like, so when are you going to lose weight? And I, I, I'll never forget this. And I was so not even thinking thinking about my body when I had just suffered a huge loss. I remember just being completely dumbfounded and she took me to an, a public place so I couldn't really like react in that someone who loves me wanted to kind of hurt me in that moment but see they, they don't think of it as that they're hurting you. They think of it as they're helping you and that's the problem. Even at this point where I am so happy with who I am as a person and the way I look, like those moments still hurt me. No one in this world can make you change. I think a lot of people need to learn that. You don't need to change for someone to love you. Just saying that right now makes me think, remember back when like I had crushes on all these boys and I would just think if I was skinny, I would be loved. <laughs> it's so stupid. There were some points in my life when I was younger and I would pray to God that if I did everything right, that he would make me skinny. I was in bed and I was praying so hard. I said, tomorrow morning, Lord, when I wake up, I want to be skinny. I thought that was the answer to everything. And that's what like I ultimately wanted. And I'm sure so many of you have thought that as, as well. If I get to point A, then I will have this and this and this. How did I get from that praying that I wanted to be skinny when I woke up the next morning to where I am now. Teaching others about body positivity and owning myself and who I am and loving myself, how, how did I get there? A lot comes with maturity and growing up and knowing who you are and what your purpose is in life and owning that and start loving each part of yourself. It's not just loving the outer self, it's also loving what's inside as well. What you're good at, um, the things that make you happy, being confident in what you provide to the world. There's all these pieces that have to come together that creates a whole healthy body image. And it wasn't until I got on the internet and I was watching people who looked like me, who were owning themselves and teaching others that you can look like this, still be beautiful and still be a badass. <laughs> the first person who showed this to me was my friend Loi Lane. I remember stumbling on her video, You're Pretty for a Fat Girl, which is something I have experienced time after time after time. Oh, your face is so pretty. And people just don't get it. They don't get that saying a part of you is pretty and everything else is not. You have to stop doing that. You have to stop saying, oh, you look so great today. So what, I didn't look great the other day? And I'm guilty of this too. I definitely say that to my coworkers, like when they look hot that day, I'm like, yes, girl, I see that effort that you put into your outfit. Like it's hard. It's, it's hard to train yourself to see everyone in this light because of what our society has put in front of us that they have perceived as what is beautiful. I truly believe that the internet changed my outlook on my body. I now see ads with women of different skin tones, of different body shapes. There are sites like ASOS.com that hold clothes for straight size, plus, tall, maternity, petite, and they don't airbrush their models, which is so important because even like plus size sites airbrush all their models so that their clothes sell better. It's ridiculous and so time consuming. Why would anyone want to do that? Personally, how did I become confident? I trained my mind. I experienced with clothes. I wore bikinis and I took pictures of myself and I told myself that you look good and I posted that stuff. Not only did I post it but I wore it in real life which I think is harder than actually posting online by the way because you can get those good angles and everyone can see those angles in real life. But every day is a battle. This is a relationship that you have with your body just like a relationship that you have with your significant other or with your parents. Every day is different. Every day is a struggle. I wake up one morning and I feel like a truck has run over me and I don't want to look cute that day. I think that really weighs on my confidence sometimes. Other times I know that my weight has fluctuated. These jeans just don't fit right 
and I don't feel good for the rest of the day. Whatever you see online of someone who is a creator and who is pushing the body positivity movement, it's not like that all the time. But you'll have your good days and those good days outweigh the bad. If you aren't feeling yourself that day, pick something that you want to love on about yourself, whether that's the way you treat someone that day. Like you wanna show love to someone else because that makes you feel good. If you are really killing it at work or at school and you wrote an amazing essay or your boss gave you amazing accolades for something that you did, that all leads into confidence. Your mental health is extremely crucial in all of this. So don't wear yourself too thin. Make sure you rest, which I need to do that more because I'm always tired and this is why I haven't been on my YouTube channel. Make sure you have those people in your life that will lift you up. I have some things written down I've already been going into it on how you can start loving yourself and I think one of the big things is having people in your life who love you for who you are and don't want to change you. And if those people aren't the closest people in your life, say your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your brother, your sister, if this is your husband, your wife, you need to start teaching them how to be confident in themselves as well. They're portraying an image, even though they're they're saying that they want to help you, they're portraying an image of themselves on to you. You can do whatever you can just to love them and make them feel confident about themselves as well. And it takes so much patience. Oh, it takes so much. My mother is what we at Bible Slate like to call sandpaper people. Um, she likes to rub me <laughs> any way that she can. Um, and it takes so much patience just to love them back because they obviously aren't loving themselves. It's important for you to tell others that they look great. That goes into changing your internal beauty standard. And it also just makes you feel good. Not only does it make that person feel good, but it makes you feel good as well. So surround yourself with positive influences. If those people closest to you are not those positive influences, you need to have people that are, whether that's someone at work, someone at school, your best friend. I don't know. It usually it's going to be your best friend. Make sure your best friend sees you and loves you for everything that you are. Uh, make sure, like, honestly, make sure you're a significant other is that way as well. I think us women, millennials, and Generation Z now heading into like serious relationships, getting married, having babies, not just women and men, that you have a significant other who can make you a better person. Throw out old clothes. Yes, those jeans that you have sitting in your closet from when you were 18 years old and hoping and wishing that they would fit you. Well, one, they're out of style, and two, get rid of them. You don't need a closet full of clothes that you think you're gonna fit back into. Nope, you don't need that, so please get rid of them. And fill your closet with pretty new clothes, and that make you feel good, because you want things in your life that will only make you feel good and not make you remember, oh, if I was, you know, 10 pounds lighter, like before I started college. No. You don't need that, so get rid of them, please. Sell some things on Poshmark so you can make some money so you can get new things. And if you're saying, Natasha, this, these are some hard things to do, yes, they are. I'm 25 years old. I, again, struggle with this every single day, but I am so confident in myself. I have so much fun dressing myself because there are so many options out there for plus size women. Like, I have a whole video about my favorite brands that you can watch up here if you are also a plus size woman um, or a plus size man and you like to dress like that. I think I was given this struggle of being plus size, being overweight, being fat to help others. It's a really unique and special thing that I have that I can reach so many people. Maybe that seven-year-old girl who was praying to be skinny, I think God knew that he had bigger things in mind for me. And so I find peace in that because he made me in his image. There's a lot of misconceptions about body positivity. I don't think it's just exclusive for plus size people. I think it is for all. Body positivity is a term that you need to use for who you are at this moment, not who you want to be or who you were in the past and not comparing those two. It is for what you are right now. Thank you everyone who watched this video. It's been a long time coming. It warms my heart and makes me cry every time someone comes up to me and tells 
me something that I might have helped them with, which is absolutely crazy. But other influencers have done that same thing to me. That's actually another tip that I forgot to mention is surround your social, your online social life with people who look like you. Besides like, you know, my, my friends who are different sizes than me, but I, I do follow a plethora of plus size people who look like me, that make me feel good about myself and who aren't hating on themselves. They're loving themselves for who they are right now. Um, that's one of my biggest tips to have a healthy online social atmosphere around you as well. And unfollow those people who don't make you feel good. It's literally a click of the button and they're gone. <laughs> you all, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for being here with me. Sorry I've been gone for so long. I'll be back. We'll see. I'm a very busy lady right now, but follow me on Instagram. I'm Toshopolis there. All right. Thank you. Ugh. How do I even end a video anymore? Ugh, okay. Keep calm and fangirl on. Bye!